Good morning, everyone. My name is Mighty Stream, and today is September the 9th. I'm going to do your Just for Today in a meditation. I hope that you're doing well this morning. I'm brought to you by Hope Through Navigation, and this is our Hood Recovery Services. You can reach me at recoveryofhope21 at gmail.com. Let's go ahead and get into our screen. It's very early here. Okay. 3.40 a.m. <laughs> wow. The name of the meditation is Feet of Clay. One of the biggest stumbling blocks to recovery seems to be placing unexpected expectations on others. Basic text, page 82. Many of us come into Narcotics Anonymous feeling pretty poorly about ourselves. By comparison, the recovering addicts we meet at meetings may seem almost superhumanly serene. These wise, loving people have many months, even years, of living in accordance with spiritual principles, giving of themselves to others without expecting anything back. We trust them, allowing them to love us until we can love ourselves. We expect them to make everything all right again. Then the glow of early recovery begins to fade, and we start to see the human side of our NA friends and sponsor. Perhaps a fellow member of our home group stands us up for a coffee date, or we see two old timers bickering at a committee meeting, or we realize our sponsor has a defect of character or two. We're crushed, disillusioned. These recovering addicts aren't perfect after all. How can we possibly trust them anymore? Somewhere between the heroes of recovery and the lousy N.A. bums lies the truth. Our fellow addicts are neither completely bad nor completely good. After all, if they were perfect, they wouldn't need this program. Our friends and sponsor are ordinary recovering addicts just like we are. We can relate to their ordinary recovery experience and use it in our own program. Just for today, my friends and my sponsor are human, just like me, and I trust their experience all the more for that. Feet of clay. <laughs> That's beautiful. You know, I think the terminology of feet of clay references just humanness, right? And so this meditation is good in regards to helping us to not have as many stumbling blocks to our recovery by not placing unrealistic, unrealistic expectations on ourselves and others. Um, so let's go ahead and take a moment of silence followed by the we version of the serenity prayer, and then we'll unpack this meditation. Moment of silence now, please. God. Grant us the serenity to accept the things we cannot change, the courage to change the things that we can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Wow, 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 wow. You know, reading this meditation, there was something in the back of my mind that was somewhat of a negative, automatic thought. And the thought, don't laugh, please don't laugh. The, the thought that I was having was, why do they have to beat me up like this today? 
<laughs> like, why does this have to be so intense and applicable for me today? And then, and then after that thought was the next thought. It's a meditation. It's a meditation meant for you to read and to think about and to apply it. So first of all, I want to say that with 29 years and a few days, it still applies to me. I still can place unrealistic expectations on others. And I can still get all out of whack by what people do or don't do. And these um, non-existent virtues that I have in my head about how I need to respond and how other people need to respond. That's that's 29 years and having gone through the steps uh, quite a few times, right? Yeah, and networking with people in the fellowship and sponsees and sponsors. And so really all I'm saying is, is that if it can apply to me, it can apply to you. And is it that big of a deal if a meditation seems to fit us more personally compared to some of the other ones? Not at all. We all have something. But let's be clear. We all have something that we can be working on to bring ourselves more into alignment with spiritual principles. And this right here, this meditation is one of those things that is talking about unrealistic expectations. It's talking about how we sometimes have a tendency to not really even talk about these expectations that we have, right? Uh, for others, for ourselves, but that we still do have them. They're, they're those things that we don't go around, well, I expect her to behave as an adult, watch her mouth. Um, all of these things, I, I, I was just about to ramble on a whole bunch of other other things that are really quite honestly, real expectations that I have for other people. But how do I get to determine what another person needs or should do? Really? I, I don't. I get to determine what I need and what I should do. But when it comes to other people, that's not my business. Now, if I find in it that they are not meeting up to what I need in order to be able to have a healthy relationship, they may not be a person that I can have a healthy relationship with. That has absolutely nothing to do with judging people and deciding that people aren't worth the time and the energy because we don't like how they behave or what they do. You know, and it's it's interesting because when newcomers come in, oh, somebody was just telling me that I was so quiet when I first came to the program. When newcomers come into NA, they typically aren't ready to start interacting with people. They're still giving us the once over. But eventually, they start to notice, oh my goodness, every time that person shares, they sound so positive and they really understand this program. I get so much from them. And then they start developing friendships and they want a sponsor and they ask someone and they get a sponsor and they, they're just so excited to have a sponsor. And that doesn't necessarily equate to them calling their sponsor regularly, but they love being able to say, I have a sponsor too, right? And then some something happens. Maybe two people at a committee meeting that have been around for a while start to bump heads and argue about 
why they should do such such and such or not do it. And this newcomer all of a sudden is like, hmm, how how dissimilar is this compared to what I was living and doing out there? Is it really all that different? <laughs> right? And they get offended that somebody has the audacity to ask them about something they shared privately and say, you know, I, I was listening to your share and it seemed like you said this and this. And I was just wondering, uh, have you ever considered doing this or, and it's maybe unsolicited advice, but we are each other's eyes and ears. And so they're approaching you privately and asking you about something that you said or did. And they're being very respectful. And you give them some answer that's half of a truth. And then you walk away angry that they had the nerve to even approach you. I've been there. I most certainly have been there. I have been one of the most unapproachable individuals in the rooms at times. Right? That's because I vacillate between Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. I, I vacillate between wanting to be, um, you know, good energy, a good person with a good spirit and not caring. We all do that. But here's the thing. If we all would remember that we all have feet of clay, our biggest one of our biggest stumbling blocks in recovery, which is placing unrealistic expectations on ourselves and others, would happen a lot more less often. If we would remember that we have feet of clay, we would be more, more likely to give people grace, to give people room to be human. Really, that's what we're talking about, is coming to a fellowship that gives you room to be human. It gives you room to be the human that you are and to grow in the areas that you need to grow in at a pace that works for you. The pressure cooker, right? We're taking, taking back the valves. We're releasing the pressure so that you can enjoy your life. This is a wonderful place to be if you've landed in Narcotics Anonymous. But if you're not involved with the program, like this is how I feel. If you are a person that is still sitting back and saying, I'm just going to listen to these podcasts, it's not going to be enough. It might be helpful, but it's not going to be enough. I love the fact that you're listening. I don't know, know you personally, but I like the fact that you're listening, right? So don't stop that. Let that be a part of your daily routine. But let's add something else today. Let's put ourselves intentionally in the atmosphere of our sponsor or our friends in recovery. And let's be mindful of when we're putting unrealistic expectations on others. Just, just don't, don't announce what you're doing, the experiment, right? Don't announce it, but intentionally put yourself in the atmosphere of other recovery people and monitor your feelings, monitor how often you make a judgment based on what they're saying or doing or not doing. Go to a, a meeting in person and sit where you're comfortable mask up if you need to, and listen without sharing. Just listen and monitor your thoughts about what people are saying or what people are doing. And every time you notice it, I want you to silently say one, two, then somebody you can't stand starts to share and you roll your eyes in your head or you kind of sigh. Oh, here we go again. Three. Okay. So that's what I want for you to do today. I want for you to monitor 
when you're placing unrealistic expectations on others, okay? And I guarantee you, if you do that and you become cognitive of it, aware of it, the more you do that, the more you'll notice that you need to stop. So I hope that helps you out. I'm going to stop the share. I've enjoyed talking to you today, and I hope that you have a beautiful day. Have a beautiful day on purpose, and I will be talking to you tomorrow.